above objects follows the four basic principles of object oriented programming these are abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism abstraction is the ability to reflect real world processes in programming language for this purpose we have attributes methods and events we use attributes methods and events in above objects to create programs which reflect the real world processes encapsulation is the ability to restrict the visibility of the coding for this we have in above objects we have different visibility sections these are public protected and private inheritance is the possibility to derive one class from another and polymorphism is the possibility to use same method for different objects in real world example this would be for example if we have method open and we can use this method open to open the object window or we can use the same method open to open the object door Let's have a close look at components of a class. A class has attributes, methods and events. A class has three different visibility sections. These are public, protected and private. Within each visibility section, it's possible to have the components of the class like attributes, methods and events as static components or instance components so for example we can have attributes methods and events as static within the public section or we can have instance attributes methods and events within the public section similarly we can have the components in private and protected section Let's have a look at how we can create several objects from a class. We have a class here. We have public section, protected section and private section. We also have static components and we have instance components. In the programming code, we can use the statement create object and create several instances from this class. This each instance is called an object. So we have object 1 and object 2 and so on. We can have any number of objects. What is very important here to understand is when we create objects from a class, only the instance components of the class are replicated to these objects. So object 1 has its own set of instance components and object 2 has its own set of instance components. These are independent of each other. On the other hand, we have static components which belong to the class. These static components can be accessed by the objects. So object 1 and object 2 can access the static components of its class. But these static components are common to all the objects. So there is only single set of static components whereas instance components are available for each object individually. Let's have a look at how inheritance works in AWAP objects. Say for example we have a class C1 and another class C2 which we derive from class C1. Then the class C2 inherits all the components of public and protected section of class C1. This is called inheritance. The class C1 in this case is the superclass and class C2 is called the subclass of class C1. As you can see all the components, attributes, methods and events are inherited from protected and public section. Other than that, class C2 can also have additional components.
the private components are not inherited at all. Similarly, we can have another class C3 which is derived from C2. And again, same thing happens. So we see that the public and protected section is fully inherited to class C3 from class C2. And apart from the inherited section, class C3 can again have its own additional components. Now it's important here to understand that the inheritance for class C3 also contains the components of class C2 which have been inherited from class C1. So the components from public and protected section of class C1 are inherited to C2 and further down to C3. This kind of relationship between class C1, C2 and C3 is called the inheritance tree and class C1 is the superclass of class C2, class C2 is the superclass of class C3, the other way around class C3 is the subclass of C2 and class C2 and C3 are the subclasses of class C1. Let's have a look at different visibility sections in a class. We have public, protected and private section. Let's take an example. We have class C1. We take another class C2 which is derived from C1. We take another class C3 which is again derived from C2. As we have learned, the public and protected section are fully inherited downwards. The private section is not inherited at all. Now the public section as the name suggests is fully accessible from outside. So class C1, class C2 or class C3, it does not matter which one. All the classes, for all the classes, it's possible to access the public section from outside. As the name suggests, it's public. The protected section can be accessed only through the subclass which means the protected section of class C1 can only be accessed by its subclass C2 or it can be accessed by class C3 which is the further subclass of C2. So the protected section of a class is accessible only to their subclasses.